Hello again YouTube. Uh, this was actually requested by a viewer. This is my teardown and explanation of how I managed to fit a 8th scale Sidewinder from Castle Creations and its motor into a 10th scale ECX Ruckus. Here we go. First simple modification I did was to remove the posts for the ESC to allow to allow it to fit flush with the stock ESC tray. The all the further modifications were done to where the motor actually sits. There were some small changes made underneath the cover here for the pinion and spur gear. You are limited in what gearing options you choose. I left I may be getting my terminology wrong here. I left my stock spur gear, same number of teeth, and just the first option I found for the shaft size on the Castle Creations motor is actually one tooth smaller than stock. The only issue with that is I'm at the absolute lower limit for the number of teeth I can have. Um, I had to make sig significant material removal to the back side of here. I will remove the motor and show you to be able to get the shaft close enough to this gear to get proper mesh. On my first attempt I did not remove enough and after the first run all of the teeth from this gear were coating the inside of this case. I have been running this for weeks with this this gear still in it and as you can see, once I got the gear mesh correct, I haven't had any problems. I did no prior cleaning to this before taking this off for this video. So it is how it's been since I corrected the gear mesh. Now I'm going to remove this so I can get the gear out. steel, 23 tooth, 5 millimeter,
These are actually the stock screws from ECX. The threads happen to be the same on the Kessel Creations motor. I made it a point to not clean this off because I wanted to show you how it's holding up so far under normal use. You can see there are some pots, spots with, where I have it mounted that are actively rubbing on the casing for the motor. Now to spin the truck around. From here, I can show you the rest of the modifications I made to the opening for the front of the motor. When I first got this truck, um, just bashing around the yard, uh, myself and my six-year-old, with all the jumping, we cracked the skid plate. I now have it both fiber reinforced. I cracked right here at this front tongue. I have it fiber reinforced with fiberglass and JB Weld. That's held up reasonably well. Uh, for some additional strength, I tied it into the rest of the rear mount. The screws, when if this were to break again, are also holding on to the rest of this. For the further modifications I made, I had to remove a bit of material. The first is I cut this tab off here that extended down to about here. Additionally, I removed 
some of this here. All I used was a uh, carbide burr and a Dremel to shave it down and then for the very inside corner I carefully took an X-Acto knife and shaved the remaining off. Additionally, I removed material from the underside of the, uh, I guess you'd call that the differential housing. When I place this motor back in that location, you'll see it's a rather tight fit. I have very little adjustment for gear lash. For the gearing I chose, if I were to do this again, I would probably step up to a 24 tooth for a slightly larger overall diameter just to allow this to not have to be quite so forced to maintain the gear lash as needed. Uh, other than that, upon reassembly, I install this after the motor is mounted. This is completely removed on the initial modifications and assembly. Once the motor is mounted and gear lash is properly set, I then reinstall this and use it to help hold the strength of the motor mounting plate just from the additional material removal. Um, I haven't seen any additional wear once setting the gear lash correctly. Um, as far as my driving style, I did set the punch on the speed controller to about 75%. Uh, just to limit the initial shock. Uh, this motor has a lot of torque and it's all available immediately. Uh, without any punch control, it's a little hard to drive. All it wants to do is standing wheelies. Even at speed, up to about three-quarter throttle, no matter how fast you're already going, if you hammer it the rest of the way, it will still stand up and still flip. So that's all I did. Thanks for watching.